Hello everyone, welcome to another Rick's Picks. Today I'm going to be doing my review of Cobra Commander by Super 7 based off of the old 80s cartoon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at him in box and then I'm going to take a look at him and his accessories and then I'll also give you my thoughts upon him. Now also today I'm also going to be doing reviews for Duke, Snake Eyes, and also the Bat. So take a look for those videos as well. So without any further ado, Let's get to the review. All right, so here's the packaging that it comes in. Um, first off, he comes in this nice brown box. Uh, this is what I believe is designed to protect the actual packaging so there's no dings damage or what have you. Uh, Super 7 does this with a bunch of their figures. I really like that they do this. So you got the G.I. Joe logo, Cobra Commander, spinning around to this side. You get a little bit of legal and stuff. And, that's pretty much all that there really is to this box. So now we get to the good stuff. There you go. The packaging for this. And I really like this. I love this blue camouflage. You got the Cobra logo right there, which is really cool. The dog tag for Cobra Commander, which is really neat. You know, you have his serial code right there. All right. The back is basically, you know... G.I. Joe, but it blends in with the background, so it's just a raised logo. All right, then you get this side that looks a little beat up. And then you have Ultimates here, which is really cool. Um, I like how it gives it this beat up weathered look to it. I think that looks really cool. And then when you open this up, you get this nice clamshell here. You can see the figure, all his accessories. And what have you. This is really cool looking. You got the G.I. Joe logo with the red, white, and blue, which is really nice. All right, this side, he basically just got the other side of the clamshell. And then here, you got the file card and some computer stuff. And like I said with um, another video, um, the Snake Eyes, I love how they brought back the card, you know. I love how they have the description. You got this nice picture of Cobra Commander from the cartoon, a couple pictures from the show itself. And I think this is a real neat style. I love that they brought this back. I wish they were doing that with the um uh the which the classified, you know, series. I wish Hasbro would be doing that. But yeah, I really like that they're doing this with these figures. So I think that's really cool. So on this side, you just got, you know, your shell. It says Ultimates on the top. Super 7, G.I. Joe, Skew, and some legal. So, without any further ado, let's open him up and see what he's about. Alright, so here's Cobra Commander. Uh, this is a beautiful figure. I love how he looks. He captures the look of the old cartoon and what have you. So, let's give him the rotation. I love the detail to him. He just... You know, really stands out. He pops. Okay. So, let's start looking at some of his points of articulation. So, his head is on a swivel. He has a shoulder joint, a bicep joint, an elbow joint, and a wrist joint. Alright. He has joint right here under the ribs. And he also has a swivel here above the belt line. All right, he has a thigh joint, a knee joint, and he does have an ankle joint. All right. Now, one thing I noticed with these figures is the factor that their peg holes are a little tight. So, you know, you got to work it a little bit. But once you get the foot actually into the hole, you know, he stands there pretty solid. So... He comes with a bunch of accessories. So, he comes with a cape. Alright. He also comes with a rifle. Okay. He comes with a pair of binoculars. Which are really nice. I love the detail on that. Alright. 
a radio. Okay. Uh, his iconic, you know, Cobra Head Scepter, which is kind of cool. All right. He comes with the snake with the earth gripped into it, which is really neat. I really like that. All right. He comes with the head without the stripe on top. All right. He comes with this pistol here. All right. Another pistol. Which they put a little bit more detail. You know, you got the Cobra logo and what have you. He has this, which I completely forget what this was about. Um, I vaguely remember the episode that it was in. Um, if anybody remembers what, what exact episode this was in and what this does, uh, go ahead and let us know in the comments. I would like to hear from you on that. Uh, this device here. Okay. Now he comes with a whole lot of hands. So he comes with a balled up fist. Okay. Another balled up fist. Okay. You got another balled up fist. So, you know, he's going to be an angry person with some balled up fists. You have this hand here that has a peg in it for the globe, the global snake. So we'll see how well that works. All right. You have a trigger finger hand. Okay, a pointing hand, all right, he has an open hand, that's probably for like, uh, something like the, um, you know, that little remote or, you know, the comm piece, which, you know, we'll, we'll see how well those work in that, and then he has an open hand. Now, the one thing about the accessories, I will say that's a disappointment, is that you don't have the hood. You know, all of us growing up, you know, we knew Cobra Commander two ways, with the helmet or the hood. You know, so I, you know, I'm kind of disappointed that he didn't come with the hood look. Um, from what I'm hearing, and I don't know if this is true, this is just rumor, is that the companies are staying away from the hood look because it kind of looks like, you know, a group of people in America's past that did some nasty things to some nasty people. If you get what I'm saying, I can't really say much on it because it might get me demonetized. So I think you guys get the gist of who I'm talking about. So they're afraid that it makes him look like those people and they don't want their toys to be associated with that. What doesn't make no sense to me because I grew up on G.I. Joe I know lots of people who grew up with G.I. Joe, and we never even remotely even thought of that. So, you know, uh, with that being said, uh, let's see how well these accessories fit with him. Hey, are you going to be in the Philadelphia area between September 9th and 10th? If so, check out RetroCon. It's affordable. They have lots of great vendors. There's going to be cosplay competitions, celebrities, and much, much more. So go ahead and check out the link in the description. And also, Samuel J. Jones is going to be there, better known as Flash Gordon. So check it out. Greg Evigan will be there, best known for BJ and the Bear, My Two Dads, and Tech Wars. And check this out. The rare Hasbro Proton Pack as a raffle prize. Now, you can't beat that. All right, so let's start with the heads first. As you notice, I already got the um, blue helmet on without the stripe. And the only reason why I am doing it uh, this way first is because I do like the, the gray stripe. So I want to keep that one on for the rest of this video. So the head just pops off easy enough. And then it just clicks into place. And it's fine. So that's pretty cool. Um, now, the one thing about this figure that I notice is that each hand is for a s specific thing. Okay. So that's why he has so many hands because each of these hands are for different things. So what I got is I got these hands here in that work good with the pistols. All right. So we're going to put a pistol in each hand and see how well the pistols work. All right. That one in, no issues. This one, 
went in, no issues. So as you can see, both pistols fit fine in those hands. All right. So let's take them out. That one. And then that one. Now this is, here is what I'm talking about. Um, This hand here only works for the rifle. So pop this hand off. Put this hand in. Okay. Do, 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 do. Now, one thing, and I think I said this before, is that these characters don't work very well with stands. Their holes are just a slight too small. So it sits on there really, really tight. And he's going to come off of there a bunch. So, once again, this hand only works for this rifle. So... Take the hand, maneuver it on in around the thumb. And now it's going to make a liar out of me. So there it goes. All right. So as you can see, that fits in there nicely. No issues. But yeah, once again, that's the primary purpose of this particular hand is for that rifle. So... You also have his goggles here that fit nicely around his neck. There's no issues there. Uh, I think you can actually have a hand hold that as well. Um, <laughs> now, the gripping hand don't work with that. Um, let's see how, if this hand will actually work with the goggles. All right, so this hand will hold the goggles. So if you want to have them in a position to where, like, let's see if we could get them into this position where you could have these on here. Yeah, it, it don't work very well. Um, it looks like the goggles are basically there just to put around his neck and look nice. I don't think you can get it into a holding position with that. So that's the goggles. Now let's go to the hand for the equipment which is this one here so pop that off put this in all right let's take this piece here right, that sits really loose in there um he can hold it but it's very loose, okay? So as you can see, he can hold that. And as we suspect it, it falls off. So let me just see something here. Um, he could probably hold it in this hand too. But the problem is the fingers aren't going to get around this. So pretty much, basically this hand, however you maneuver it, he can hold it in that hand. Um, and that's pretty much it with that particular hand. So this can hold that and it can also hold this little thing here. That fits in there as well. No issues, it's a little loose, but it, it, it sits in there and it works. All right, oh shoot, back to the trigger hands. Almost forgot this goofy gun. So put this back in. All right. And we can use this gun. See how well this fits in that hand. All right. As you can see, that gun fits in that hand as well. No issues with that. All right. All right. Next up is the fun one. All right. And that's the snake on the globe. So what it is, is it has its own special hand here. As I showed you before, it has a little peg right here. The snake also has a hole. Now this sits on here one way and one way only. So you line it up because there's a flat end on one side. All right. Now this is kind of a bear to get in there because it's a softer plastic but it does go on there. 
All right, let's take this hand off and pop that in there. I find it easier to put it on there while the hand is off, you know, but you can do it with the hand actually on them. All right, there it goes. Now the snake is on there, but it don't sit very well, okay? It really doesn't. Um, try it one more time. All right, because what, what, what part of the problem is here is that the snake globe, all right, a little bit too heavy for the wrist. So it wants to bend down. See, now, now it doesn't even want to go on there. So, you know, I, I think personally that maybe this hand, that snake should have just been machine factory just glued on because so as you see it don't really want to sit on there let me try it with the hand off again it seems to want to go on better with the hand off all right Dude. so yeah that's the right way So, see, when I have it off, it's just easier to push in. Now, here's the real trick. Getting it on there with the snake on. There we go. Okay. So, as you see, the wrist wants to just flop over. Because the snake is just too much weight for it. All right. Like, maybe if you have them hold it out or something. And the thing I don't like about this hand also is the snake only looks one way. And that's towards him. But here's something neat that I discovered. Take this off. Pop that off of there. And put him back on the stand. All right. You have this open hand. And yes, it's made for the other hand, you know, on the other arm. But I found that if you take this open hand, it may look a little weird because you got the thumb on the wrong side, but it does make it so he can hold the snake in different directions. Like if you want to hold it close, you kind of want it to look like it's looking out or something. You can set it in this hand and then you can spin the snake however you want it, whether you want it facing out or what have you. So... It sits a little bit better in this hand, in my opinion. So, like I said, if you want the snake looking other directions, I mean, sure, yeah, it's going to be a little odd that your Cobra Commander's thumb is on the inside. But as you can see, it will sit there. So if you want it on a shelf and you want to maneuver it and have the snake look other directions, you can kind of use that hand to have the snake maneuvered. However you want it like that. That look that looks pretty cool like that. It's just unfortunately the thumb will be on the wrong hand. So that's probably one of my biggest pet peeves is the snake. So let's take this off. Let's just put a fist in there. Now, earlier I said that he had three fists. And actually, he comes with two fists and a hand meant to hold his cane or well, his scepter. So this hand here has a hole down the middle. All right. So if you take this hand off, put this one on. There we go. Back onto the stand because he doesn't like stands. The scepter just slides nicely in there. There we go. All right. And now he can hold the scepter, no issues. And last but not least, his cape. All right, so what this does is this just bends around his neck because there's a wire inside of it. So you bend it around his neck and it just sits there. All right, there's nothing attaching his cape to anything. It just oops, sits on there just like that. All right. 
So now he has the cape. It has a wire frame on the bottom too. That's really nice. So you can like bend the cape in different directions and positions and stuff. Um, it's a nice looking cape. If you have it, have them sitting on a shelf, it works, you know, I think, it, I, I understand the concept that they don't want, you know, peg holes and stuff to make the figure look good if he isn't wearing a cape, if he is, what I think might have worked with this, it's maybe underneath the plastic, they may have put two magnets, you know, a magnet on each side, so when you put the cape on, it might sit a little bit better because the magnets would hold it in place better, but it's not that bad. You know, if he's going to be sitting on a shelf looking like this, it works. You know, so overall, I do like this figure. I think he looks really cool. He'll look really nice on the shelf. Probably my only disappointment with this is the snake and globe. I wish they would have thought of a better way to put that snake and globe on him. Especially because they have a special hand for it. I think that should have just been a peg, not a half peg so that way you could spin the snake any way you want on it and you know like i showed you can try to use that other hand as an alternative to try to get the snake into other positions but other than that i love it i think you look great with the rest of your joe figures and he's a really cool looking figure so with that being said i hope you did like this review if you did go ahead and hit a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed yet go ahead and hit that subscribe button Small click for you, but it really helped this channel grow. So, until the next one, late.